Peter. No, 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 no. Peter? I'll talk to her. Go! Sammy, Go! shut the... What the f***? Abigail's out here doing her fancy ballet moves in an empty theater, like she's auditioning for a horror movie or something. Meanwhile, a group of criminals is prepping for their big moment. The hacker? Oh, he's busy turning off all the security cameras at Abigail's house, like it's just a Tuesday. And the sniper? Yeah, he's just chill on the roof, probably doing some light yoga while he waits. So, Abigail finishes her ballet, hops in the car with her driver, who's totally clueless that there's a tracker slapped under the car. The second they start moving, the bad guys are like, and we're off. Hacker dude opens her house like he's got a universal remote, and three of them sneak into her bedroom like the worst game of hide and seek ever. One woman's like, uh, guys, we're kidnapping a kid. That's not usually my thing. But they're all, shut up and roll with it, Karen. So Abigail gets home, hops into bed, and boom. <laughs> Yeah, she just went full John Wick. Classic kidnapper etiquette. They knock Abigail out with a sedative, and just when things couldn't get more chaotic, the team outside is like, Yo, someone's pulling up. The sniper's already on it, probably sipping a latte while everything's going down. The trio inside panic. Stuff Abigail in a bag, like some really messed up grocery shopping, and haul her out through the window. Alarms start going off, and they're running like it's a Black Friday sale. But no worries, getaway car rolls in just in time. They all pile in, check Abigail's pulse, blindfold her, and everything's back on track. Until traffic. Typical. The hacker's like, uh, take a detour? But her driver hides the van behind a truck instead. Finally, they arrive at this super sketchy abandoned mansion that looks like it's one haunted doll away from being cursed. Lambert, their boss, shows up and is like, wait, hold on, that's, uh, that's the guy from Breaking Bad. Anyway, he shows up and is like, all right, listen up. No real names, no backstories, and for the love of God, no clapping cheeks. Oh, and they've got 24 hours to babysit Abigail until her rich dad coughs up $50 million. Average YouTuber salary. Just kidding, I wish. Lambert didn't mention who the dad is, but collects everyone's phones like he's the world's most paranoid teacher on a field trip. Before he leaves, he gives them random code names. So the crew starts drinking, because obviously that's the professional thing to be doing right now. Dean's over there trying to guess everyone's backstory like he's Sherlock Holmes, but spoiler alert, he sucks at it. Joey roasts him hard, and the rest of them are like, bet you can't do better. But Joey? Oh, she nails it. She's like, Frank, detective. Peter, stupid mob guy. Sammy, rich hacker girl just doing this for kicks. Rickles, sniper. Dean, total sociopath. Meanwhile, Frank's like, And you are a junkie. A little candy affectation. Well, you don't want to have a drink with us? Don't ever f*** with me. And Joey's like, touche. Joey checks on Abigail, who's like, Um, this blindfold is way too tight. Thanks. So Joey fixes it and even recuffs her more comfortably. Because hey, who said kidnappers can't be considerate? Abigail's crying, and Joey's trying to comfort her, saying they're only in it for the money. That really warms the heart. Abigail makes her pinky promise, and Joey's like, All right, I've got a son too, you know. And Abigail's all, Yeah, well, you guys totally messed up. My dad doesn't even care about me at all. Oh, and before Joey leaves, Abigail drops this gem. Joey? Yeah? I'm sorry about what's gonna happen to you. Uh, what now? Joey runs off to tell Frank that maybe Abigail's dad is a total maniac. And Frank's like, eh, she's probably just messing with you. Except Frank totally freaks out and goes to check on Abigail himself. Surprise. Look away! Don't fucking look at me! You see my face? You see my fucking face, huh? Are you lying to me? No. Who the fuck is your father? And when she says it's Christoph Lazar, a literal crime boss, Frank's like, well, I'm out of here. He runs back to the group, all panicked, and drops the bomb. We kidnap Christoph Lazar's daughter. Everyone freaks out, except for Peter. He's probably still trying to figure out where he is. Joey and Rickles know the name, and now everyone's sweating bullets. But after a lot of arguing, they decide, screw it, let's stick around, get the money, and disappear to some tropical island. They agree to lock all the doors, keep watch, and hope for the best. Later, Joey's wandering around the mansion, chasing some weird noise, only to find an open window. She closes it, spots a creepy statue of a father and child, because of course it's creepy decor, and bumps into Rickles. He tries to flirt with her, but it's so bad it's almost impressive. They both agree that no one can be trusted. And yeah, this whole situation is totally spiraling. So Sammy's just chilling over here, finds a room with a TV, and suddenly boom. It's Dean, it's Dean. I saw the way he was looking at me earlier, and I thought we could just like... Get the f out! I'm not whoa, looking whoa. at you, man! Bro has no riz. Sammy's like, nope, and kicks him out, probably thinking, not today, creep. Dean, clearly on a mission to be a nuisance, finds Peter sleeping, and you guessed it, draws a big old man's member on his face. 
Classic Dean. Dean keeps wandering around like he's on a haunted house tour. I mean, he kind of is. And then he stumbles into a dark corridor filled with creepy old pictures. And one of them? Yeah, it looks a lot like Abigail. Because of course it does. Then he heads to the basement kitchen and a door just opens by itself, like it's trying to be spooky. Dean's confused but rolls with it, until he's startled by a rat. Ratatouille moment. You get it because it's a rat in the kitchen? <laughs> I'm sorry. And just when he's like, okay, I'm out... Sammy hears him screaming and heads to the basement, where she finds Dean sitting at the table like nothing's wrong. Except when she gets closer, he gives her head. Yeah. His head, his head falls off. He's dead. He died. Yeah, it's that kind of party. Sammy, being a normal human, screams and then immediately throws up. Me, when I see my own reflection. The others come running down and they're all like, uh, Sammy's strong, but not decapitation strong. Which, fair. Then, someone brings up that old story about Lazar's hitman. A hitman known only as Valdez. He's the one where three top gang members got their heads chopped off by some ghost ninja assassin in a locked room on the 23rd floor. Super comforting. Now everyone's on edge, so they rush to check on Abigail. And she's just chilling. Perfectly fine, of course. Rickles is freaked out and ready to bounce, but when he opens the front door, surprise, there's a barred gate like they're suddenly in Saw. Peter tries to muscle it open, but all that does is trigger the security system. Boom. Every window is now sealed tight. Joey's like, okay guys, it's official, we're in a trap. Rickles runs to grab his gun, but plot twist, it's gone. Joey runs back to Abigail, asking if she's seen anyone else. But Abigail's like, nope, just me and Frank. Oh, and Frank totally threatened me and said he works for my dad. And also, his real name is Valdez. Casual bomb drop. What a twist. Joey rushes to Rickles, and they're both like, none of this makes sense. But hey, they'll figure it out. Just as Joey's about to leave, she hears a noise. Rickles is standing there, looking super awkward, and Joey's like, you good? Turns out, no. And yeah, he's definitely dead. Joey rushes downstairs, guns blazing, and points her weapon at Frank, accusing him of being Valdez and offing Rickles. Frank pulls out his own gun, because why not escalate the situation? He's all, Joey, Abigail's totally manipulating you. Then he sends Peter off to deal with Abigail, because clearly, Peter's the guy for that job. Peter, though, he's got no chance. He walks into Abigail's room, ready to shoot, and Joey shows up just in time to disarm him like a pro. Then Sammy and Frank roll in, and it's Chaos City. But hold up, Abigail casually pops out of the handcuffs like Houdini, stands up, and bam. <laughs> The group does the smart thing and runs, locking the door behind them. They huddle up and have a quick, oh crap moment, realizing Abigail was vault ass all along. Double plot twist. They're stuck in the house because all the doors are sealed and Sammy's like, sorry guys, I don't have the hacker tools to bust out of here. Everyone's freaking out, especially Peter. But Frank, who's in full crisis mode, grabs him by the neck and tells him to shut up. Just don't do that again. Finally, they grab some pool sticks like they're suddenly in a DIY vampire movie, while Sammy searches for garlic in the kitchen. Joey, of course, is like, guys, if we kill her, her dad's gonna lose his mind. That's a fair point, yeah. Armed with pool cues and some questionable plans, they storm back into Abigail's room, and she's gone, of course. Then they hear music playing from another room. They walk in, and there's Abigail, having a little dance session with Dean's dead body like it's a casual Tuesday. She's pretending to be sweet at first, but Sammy's not having it and attacks. <laughs> At this point, the group gives up and limps back downstairs, where Joey helps patch up their wounds. She's like, okay, remember when the sedative worked? We still have one left. So they come up with this genius plan. Split up, find Abigail, and inject her with the sedative. Simple, right? What could go wrong? Sammy takes the grossest quarter in the house. <laughs> Meanwhile, Peter's running away like his life depends on it, because it does. But Abigail's right on his heels, doing freaky ballet moves as she chases him. He's running like he's in the Special Olympics. Whoops. Not to be outdone, Abigail chases after Frank and pushes him off too, then casually sits on him like he's a cushion.
Whoa, 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 what the f***? She's f flying! Sammy's freaking out thinking she's about to turn into a vampire because, well, she got bitten. Fast forward a bit and Abigail wakes up locked in an elevator like a trapped mouse. Joey's all business, offering a deal. Tell us how to get out and maybe we let you go. Abigail, of course, laughs it off like a true villain and reveals that this was all her master plan. Plot twist, Lambert, he works for her. Oh, and she knows everyone's dirty little secrets. Sammy, she started out stealing from her rich parents before trying to take down a big target. Peter, just a thug who stole from his own crime crew. Frank, a detective turned criminal who went undercover with the bad guys and liked it a little too much. Joey, ex-army medic who got hooked on meds, left her son with a terrible dad and started working as an underground doctor until she accidentally killed a gang member during surgery. Yikes, this crew has some baggage. Turns out everyone here wronged Lazar or his gang somehow, and Abigail's just been playing with them like her personal toys. She didn't kill them right away because, you know, that would be boring. Then she offers a deal, let her out, and she'll let two of them live. Frank's like, how about we just kill her? And Abigail, being the drama queen she is, snaps. Fine, I'll only save the one who frees me. I mean, who's, who's gonna fall for that? She's fuck lying, moron. The group pieces out, leaving Frank behind to guard Abigail. What could go wrong? Once everyone's gone, Frank tries his luck. He's like, okay, I'll let you go if you tell me how to get out of this house. Abigail, being the manipulative mastermind, tells him to pull Agatha Christie's book in the library to reveal a secret door. Frank's like, thanks, but of course doesn't release her because, you know, she's a killer 2,000-year-old vampire. <laughs> The whole gang regroups in the library, standing under the safety of the sunlight streaming through the high windows. Sammy, relieved she's not turning into a vampire, does a mental happy dance. Clearly, she hasn't seen the rest of the movie. Frank pulls the Agatha Christie book like a kid opening a secret passage in a spy movie. But surprise, Abigail lied. And Joey, out of patience and candy, starts trying to smash through the walls, but it's a no-go. Joey's clearly on edge, so she opens up to Sammy, explaining how she left her son behind to get clean, hoping to use this job's money as her reset button. Sammy hears the word reset and gets a light bulb moment. If they can find the power source, she might be able to sort out the locks and finally get them out of this insane vampire-filled mansion. So the gang splits up to search the mansion like that's going to end well. Suddenly, music starts playing, again, because apparently Abigail has a flair for the dramatic, and she uses her bite to take control of Sammy. <laughs> Then Abigail, always one to turn things into a twisted performance, makes Sammy dance like some weird vampire ballet. Joey and Frank show up just in time for the show, but Sammy hides her face like she's about to drop a plot twist. They're suspicious, of course, because why wouldn't they be? Sammy finally reveals her full vampire makeover. Run! They make it to the library, where Abigail, using Sammy's voice like some evil ventriloquist, explains how much she hates the room because that's where her dad turned her into a vampire. Like, thanks for sharing. Joey and Frank, even though they know it's probably a trap, are like, well, let's see where this goes, and head through the door. They find themselves in a control room, and guess who's waiting for them? Lambert. And surprise, he's a vampire too. He's, he's also the guy from Breaking Bad, if I didn't mention that already. I think I, I, I think I mentioned it. Lambert grabs Joey by the neck and spills the whole evil villain monologue. Apparently, Abigail turned him two years ago when she found out he helped Frank infiltrate the gang. She threatened his family, and now his full-time job is luring her dad's enemies into this freaky mansion so she can toy with them. Oh, and by the way, Lazar, he's on his way to the mansion. Lambert's got a plan of his own, though. He wants to take down both Abigail and her dad, and offers to turn Frank into a vampire if he agrees to help. Frank's like, screw it, why not? So Lambert knocks out Joey and bites Frank, turning him into Team Edward. That's a, uh, that's a Twilight reference. When Joey wakes up, she gets front row seats to Frank's painful transformation. Lambert tells Frank to feed on Joey, but plot twist. That's what's setting me up, you undead prick. Right on cue, Abigail shows up, ready to rumble. <laughs> No! 
Joey, in a moment of, just in case this is my last chance, leaves a heartfelt voicemail for her son. But before she can have a full Hallmark moment, Frank finds her, tosses her back into the library, where he starts playing a game of throw Joey into all the furniture. Joey tries to fight back, but her punches are like mosquito bites to a vampire. Frank grabs her by the neck and throws her down again. <laughs> Abigail, now weak and desperate, begs Joey for help. She's like, look, I can't take him down by myself. Help me kill Frank, and I'll let you go see your kid. Pinky promise, vampire style. <laughs> Then he goes back to snacking on Abigail, but she raises her pinky, reminding Joey of their promise. Just as things are looking dire, Frank pulls Joey off the stake and bites her neck. He tries to use his vampire powers to force her to pick up the stake and finish off Abigail, but Joey's playing pretend. <laughs> Abigail explains that Frank's powers haven't fully developed yet, so he can't do all the cool vampire shit yet, like controlling Joey. While they're distracted, Joey retrieves the stake and tackles Frank. Oh, f Joey's worried she might still turn into a vampire, but Abigail reassures her that since Frank's dead, it won't happen. True to her word, Abigail lets Joey go, telling her to go find her son. Just as Joey's about to leave, someone grabs her shoulder. It's Lazar, Abigail's father. He's all mysterious and creepy, saying he's had many names over the years and definitely wants to kill Joey and eat her and drink her blood. But Abigail steps in, defending Joey, telling her that Joey saved her life when he wasn't around. Lazar, in a rare moment of grace, kisses Joey's hand and lets her go. Joey, finally free, rushes back to the van. And guess what? She finds a lollipop. Naturally, she pops it into her mouth, because after a night like that, you've earned a treat. Moral of the story, it's morbid time.